This is the only Flash Forge Orca Slicer tutorial you need. This is a full step-by-step -step beginner's guide to getting you to 3D printing on your Flash Forge 3D printer using the slicer known as Flash Forge Orca. Let's get started. Step number one, what we first need to do is go to flashforge.com, the website, and then go to the top tabs over here and then click on the software tab here. You will see there's a drop down where you can download, you can go to two different pages. There's Orca Flash Forge, which is the slicer that goes on your computer, and then there's Flash Maker that goes on your phone. We're going to be needing both, but first let's install Orca Flash Forge. So click on that one right there. And then scroll down. The very top of the list is the most updated versions of Orca Flash Forge. So try to download at the top of the list. Here's the download for Windows, and then here's the download for Mac. So just pick which one you have, and then click on it, and then it should open a download for you. I'm on Google Chrome. It's just up here in the right-hand corner. When it's finished downloading, all you do is double-click and install it, and it'll walk you through the installation process. Then after you've installed the app, step number two is to click on the app and open it. So double click on it and it should start to automatically load. Chances are Orca Flash Forge has to update and it's gonna ask you. And then what we wanna do is click on get started. Then it's gonna ask you what country you live in. Just go through all these prompts and it's going to have you like add your printers as well. So search Flash Forge and then add your printer. Maybe you have the Adventure 5M or maybe you have the AD5X. I'm gonna do the AD5X, then click on Next, and then it'll have you select all the filaments. So this is essentially what Orca Flash Forge looks like. So the first step that we need to do is actually log in and register. So then click on that. And what we next need to do is go back to that website, and then what we're gonna do is actually download the other app that I was telling you about. So if you hover over the software tab at flashforge.com again, click on Flash Maker, and then what you can also do here is scroll down, and there's QR codes right here. We have the Apple App Store, and then we have the Android App Store right here. And what you're gonna wanna do here is open your phone camera, get your phone ready, open the phone camera, and then just scan which app you need. If you're on an Android, obviously scan the Android. And then if you're on an App Store, scan that one. And then it will prompt you to download Flash Maker. And once you have downloaded Flash Maker, what you then wanna do is open up the app and you wanna walk through all the settings and create a essentially a FlashForge account that you can connect your 3D printer. This is the same account that we're gonna be logging into the software with, the Slicer software. So just make sure you do all that, put in your email, your information, connect your 3D printer, etc. And then once you're done with that, we can then move back to the slicer. So the next step is to open back up Orca Flash Forge on your desktop computer. So what we wanna do here, this is what's gonna look like. You need to click on login slash register right here. And this is where we need to log into our account that we just connected with Flash Maker. I know this feels like a lot and it kind of is, but this is how it works. So this is my login. Just give me a second to put my password in and click log in. Okay, so now that you have successfully logged in to the Orca Flash Forge slicer here, what we wanna do is click on the device tab. It's the fourth one over here. Click on device and we wanna make sure that your 3D printer is showing up right here and it says idle. If it does not, if it does not show up here, what I advise you to do is open up Flash Maker on your phone and just make sure if you can see what it says on there for your 3D printer, it'll say idle or not. If you can't get it to show up, Flash Forge machines are kind of known to have connectivity issues. What I advise you to do is go down to your 3D printer and manually reconnect to the Wi-Fi. Just make sure there is some issues known for this. This will save you. Okay, so now we are ready to 3D print things. What we first wanna do is click on the home button. This is Flash Forge Orca Slicer. So what you wanna do here is click on new project. We are going to open a new project. And first here, your 3D printer should show up right here. If it hasn't yet, we're gonna have some issues. Click on the drop down, and you may have to just select the printer. But if it's connected in your device tab right here, it should show up there. So this is how this is gonna work. This slicer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the left side of the tabs and go all the way to the right into 3D printing. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we first need to do here is make sure we have the right printer and the build plate should automatically load if, if you have yours connected. If you have customized your build plate, 
I don't advise you do this as a total beginner, but if you're not a beginner, just choose the right bed plate, right? It's that simple. And then next what we wanna do here is we wanna choose the correct filament. So just click here and do a drop down of all of the different types of filament. What you can do is just search for like generic stuff, or you can use the flash forge filament if that's what you bought. To add filament, all you do is click on add slash remove filament, and then we can choose all the generics here. You can clear it, etc. Next, what we need to do is go and find a 3D print file. What I advise you to do is go to your web browser and then search in some of the websites that you can find 3D printed models, right? So there's printables, there's um, tons of different websites, printables, flash maker, um, Thingiverse, then click on 3D models. Essentially, we need to find what we need to 3D print. If you're a total noob, I would advise doing something pretty simple, especially like a single color print. So all you do then is we need to download the, the file and essentially it's a .3mf file. So click on download here and it'll either be an STL file or a 3mf file. So that's our 3D print model file. Then we can go back to Orca Flashforge here and then click right here, this plus button. See where my mouse is right here? This is where we add new files. So click there and then click on my downloads. Here is the STL right here and it automatically popped up. Super cool, right? This is like a tray organizer of such. So I think it's important to know that once the file is on your build plate, how you kind of navigate this is what you do is you left click on your mouse. If you left click and hold, you can kind of scroll around your mouse and move around and see every view of the model. Then you can zoom in on your mouse as well to get closer and you can zoom out to get farther away. You can also right click and hold and move around the build plate to get different locations. Like if you were to zoom in and you wanted to see like a specific area, you can really start to kind of zoom in and get a feel for what it looks like. So this is how this works guys. So there's, there's two series of tabs in Orca Flash Forge. We have all of this stuff on the left here. So as if you click over to the different tabs, we have settings on the left. And then also we have tabs up here where we can kind of customize, customize the file itself. We already talked about a lot of this stuff in the prepare tab. And the prepare tab is essentially where you prepare everything. And then when you go to preview, that's going to show you like how the printer wants or how the slicer wants to create it to print it, etc. So just double check your printer, your bed plate, your type of filament. And then down here, if you're a total beginner, I would just urge that you leave this stuff alone. Um, because a lot of the slicer settings are really good at what they do. But as you get more intermediate and experienced, you can mess with this stuff. This is like kind of geeky stuff like layer heights, seam position. If you click on the strength tab, you can do like wall loops. Um, supports we will talk about in a little bit. This file doesn't probably need supports, but uh, supports are where when things need, where, where there's an overhang and you need supports. We'll talk about that in a second. But that's essentially it for the prepare tab. Up here, all of these files or all these buttons up here are essentially doing different things. And as I said, we just added a file with this button. Um, you can do auto orientation. You can um, say if I wanted to move the sizing or like kind of rotate, you know, any customization that you want to do to your file, it's going to happen up here. So say if I wanted to change the size, the sizing of something is probably what you're going to be wanting to do because this is pretty big. I don't know if I want it this big. So what I would do is click on the scale button and then I can downsize it or upsize it based on scale or I can do actual sizing in millimeters. Say if I do like 80% of this and I keep it uniform to scale, meaning all the dimensions and axes stay uniform, which I highly advise. If I click enter, it just shrunk. See that? And then if I really wanted to get crazy and I wanted to like thicken it up, what I could do is I could click on the sizing or the scaling right here. See, I could like I could raise this. See if I wanted a lot deeper, I could click on that, um, what button is this? The scale button. You can kind of essentially customize anything you want here, but you wanna keep it uniform. And if at any point you wanna click undo, there's an undo button up here in the left-hand corner. So then what we can do here is, you know, to work on all of these settings up here, you have to left click and highlight the model. So I think this would be a cool thing to 3D print. There's a bunch of other settings up here, like here's a text, uh, you can add text to the side of it. Say if I wanted to put text right here, I could just do that. We could put someone's name on here. Say if this was like, uh, you know, kids really love this stuff. I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna put it right here. You have to be careful because some of these settings are a little touchy, like that text feature. As soon as I let go of the text, that's where it like was automatically. So I'm gonna bring it to the side here. Yeah, see, it's really kind of touchy. You got to be careful. And it's kind of just like any other software. You kind of just learn what you're doing here. So click there. 
you can kind of turn the text around. Here's the location of it. You can put it at an angle. I could put someone's name. Let's put 3D print, dude. But kids really adore this when you can like put text in here. You can do height. You can change all of these settings. So the world is your oyster as far as creativity goes. You know, if I zoom in, you can kind of see how that looks and it's gonna be pretty cool. I don't actually want text on this, but that's just one of the features we, we can be doing here. And then there's a bunch of other settings up here, like um, you can lay on face, you can get dimensions of different things, you can use the measure tool. Say if you wanted to get the width of this or of that, it'll tell you selection one, what's, what's the measurement from here to there, and it'll tell you it, you know what I mean? So that's another cool setting. Um, what are some of these other settings? You can do different different painting. There's a painting feature. Say if you wanted to do like different color filaments on the top. Uh, essentially painting is changing the types of filament and the colors on it. Super cool feature as well. This feature you can do like different puzzle and assembly. Say if you wanted to break this into two pieces, you could do that as well. If you wanted to move it here, if you wanted to rotate it at a different axis, maybe if you were having issues with kind of just like supports or just how it was lining up, you can literally customize the angle of it all. So like, right, this is a good example. So if I kept this angle right here, the 3D printer cannot print where there's overhang. So if I go ahead and if I click preview, which is the next step and where the slicer figures out if it's gonna have issues or not, it'll tell you that there's a warning that there needs to be supports right here. So we'd have to click back to the prepare tab and then click on supports. There's two different types of supports. There's a tree support and then a normal support. I tend to like the tree. Most people do because it peels away the best. So if I click preview and have it slice it and figure out what's the best for printing it, this is what uh, the preview tab does. And you may find that it'll bog down your computer and it's because it's, it's using a lot of processing power to figure out like how it should 3D print. See like this is the support and these are all gonna peel off. Like this isn't super, like this isn't a great idea. What I would do is go back to the prepare tab and I just know that this isn't a great idea and then I can click on it and then I can do auto orientate. See how it fixed itself? Now it's like, hey, this is a much smarter way to 3D print this object. And if I click preview now, it's gonna show me even though I have supports clicked, I don't need them. And again, I have a bunch of videos on different supports and how to paint, like how to do custom supports. I have videos on how to do all this stuff on Orca Slicer. So if I kind of breeze past one thing, just know that I have individual videos on all of this stuff. So now that we have um, figured everything out, if we start at the prepare tab, it's the perfect sizing I want, it's in the location I want. You know, if you left click and highlight, you can drop and drag it anywhere. Um, what you can do is also um, choose your choose the filament. You know, we, we, we checked in all these settings. We left all this customizable stuff just the way it is, just because the slicer knows what it's doing. Just leave it at that. And then click preview, that's the next process. This kind of gives us a look at what it's gonna look like when the 3D printer is 3D printing it, right? It tells us how much filament in time is on each section, the inner walls, the outer walls. Um, it's really kind of geeky stuff. But it'll tell you down here, which is pretty important to know, the cost of how much filament it's going to be using. This is a uh, $1.25. And then the total time, an hour and 22 minutes. This is good to keep an eye on because sometimes we'll, we'll be 3D printing something and it'll be like, oh, this takes 14 hours. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to wait that long, right? So now that we are ready to print it, um, there's a couple more settings in here. This is called the layer height tool. See this right here. If you left click and hold it down, sometimes I like to get a better view here. And if you left click, hold this down, it shows you what it looks like as it's 3D printing. And th these numbers right here are essentially the G code that is used to like, that you, uh, it, you, the printer uses it to print the file. I don't really know how to explain it all that great, but it's just known as G code. So then if you left click, drag it up, this is what it looks like as it 3D prints. I always like to look at this because it's fascinating. It shows you the different style grid on the inside, what the lines look like, the layer lines, and if we just keep going up with it, it eventually finishes. And it's just kind of fascinating to look at. If you have any issues, sometimes it'll show you in this layer height tool. Okay, but from, from here on out, like we are ready to 3D print this, right? 
So then what we need to do here is click on the device tab, which is next. So click on the device tab and make sure that our printer says it is idling, the 3D printer here. If it's not here, you need you have connectivity issues. Flashforge is kind of known for this, but especially with the newer printers. Um, just make sure it's also connected on your app, FlashMaker. So then once we're done there, go back to the preview tab. We are now ready to send the 3D print file to the 3D printer. So next what we want to do here is we want to click on print plate up here in the right hand corner. So click there and then your printer should pop up right here. Mine is working. It's the 85X. If you can't find it, you can click on refresh. Then what you need to do is select the PLA in which location it is found, right? And then also what I like to do is I like to check this leveling and also to enable IFS. Then depending which Flash Force 3D printer you have, you can choose the PLA here and it'll have the different colors. I have the multicolor Flash Force printer. So I'm just gonna choose this single color filament that I have in here. So I'm gonna select that one, which is it's a blue or something like that. And then all I have to do then is click send and it is now being sent to the 3D printer. Sometimes I have found that, you know, if it doesn't, if it has trouble sending, well, again, you're going to just maybe go check the connectivity issues. But yeah, from here on out, what you can do is actually click on the device tab and get live updates of your 3D printer. What's cool here is you can click on the camera. Sometimes this works. It's either a hit or miss. Sometimes it doesn't work, um, but it'll give you the time of the 3D print. And then also you can pause your print, you can check bed temperatures, you can turn on the light, you can turn on the fan manually. What I tend to do, honestly guys, is just to kind of leave this be and just go and let it 3D print. This is the only Flash Forge Orca Slicer tutorial you need. Hopefully this beginner step-by-step -step tutorial helped you learn how to 3D print models on your Flash Forge 3D printer. Hit me up in the comments down below and please subscribe. But before you go, make sure to check out this next video because I know you're going to love it.